welcome on gum channel please subscribe like share and most importantly comment this video is about zimbabwe culture wildlife what zimbabwe is famous for demographics and three of famous personalities of zimbabwe zimbabwe officially the republic of zimbabwe is a landlocked country in southern africa between the zambezi and limpopo rivers bordered by south africa to the south botswana to the southwest zambia to the north and mozambique to the east the capital and the largest city is harare the second largest city is bulawayo the country is roughly 15 million people zimbabwe has 16 official languages with english Shona and Devere the most common. The population of Zimbabwe has grown during the 20th century in accordance with the model of a developing country with high birth rates and falling death rates, resulting in relatively high population growth, around 3% or above in the 1960s and early 1970s. After a spurt in the period of 1980 up to 1983 following independence, a decline in birth rates in said. Since 1991, however, there has been a jump in death rate from a low of 10 per 1000 in 1985 to a high of 25 per 1000 in 2002 and 2003. It has since subsided to just under 22 per 1000. Estimate for 2007, a little below the birth rate of around 27 per 1,000. The high death rate is a result of poor medical facilities. This leads to a small natural increase of around 0.5%. Deaths due to HIV AIDS have reduced due to improved methods of protection. However, outward migration rates of around 1.5% or more have been experienced for over a decade. Therefore, actual population changes are uncertain. The recent increase of immigration and death toll from AIDS, the total population might be declining to as low as 8 million according to some estimates. Based on 2022 revision of the world population prospects, the population of Zimbabwe was estimated by the United Nations at 15,993,524 in 2021. About that 8.9% comprised youth under 15, while other 56.9% grouped persons aged between 15 and 65 years. Only around 4.2% of citizens were apparently over 65. 85% of Zimbabweans are Christians, and of that number, 61% regularly attend Christian churches. The largest Christian churches are Anglican, Roman Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, and Methodist. However, like most former European colonies, Christianity is often mixed with enduring traditional beliefs. Besides Christianity, ancestral worship, Ahmad laws, is the most practiced non-Christian religion, which involves ancestral worship and spiritual intercession. Under 1% of the population is Muslim, although many Zimbabweans are influenced by Abrahamic food laws. Like in many African countries, a majority of Zimbabweans depend on staple foods, mealy meal or cornmeal as it is known in other parts of the world. It is used to prepare butter, a porridge made by mixing cornmeal with water to make sticky paste. This is usually flavored with butter or peanut butter. Butter is usually eaten for breakfast. Cornmeal is also used to make sadza, which is usually eaten for dinner and by many for lunch too. This meal is usually served with vegetables, beans and meat. Sads is also commonly eaten with a sausage made from beef or pork, chicken or curdled milk, commonly known as lacto. Rice and chicken with coles slow salad is often served the main meal. Graduations, weddings, and any other family gatherings will usually be celebrated with the killing of a goat, sheep, or cow, which will be barbecued for the gathered family. Since Zimbabwe was a British colony, they have adopted some English habits. For example, most people will have porridge in the morning. However, they will still have 10 o'clock tea, midday tea. They will have laundry can be leftovers from the night before freshly cooked sadza or sandwiches, which is more commonly in the cities. After lunch, there is usually 4 o'clock tea, afternoon tea, which is served before dinner. It is not uncommon for tea to be had after dinner. 
Traditional arts in Zimbabwe include pottery, basketry, textiles, jewelry, and carving. Among the distinctive qualities are symmetrically patterned woven baskets and stools carved out of single piece of wood. Shona sculpture in modern times have become a fusion of African folklore with European influences. It is widely respected across the globe and itself has had an impact on the global sculpture since the 1980s. A recurring theme of Zimbabwean art is the metamorphosis of a man into beast. Among members of the white minority community, theater has a large following, with numerous theatrical companies performing in Zimbabwe's urban areas. The country's art is admired by those that know for its existence, and several Zimbabwean artists have managed to gain a world audience. Internationally, Zimbabwean sculptures have managed to influence a new generation of artists, particularly African Americans, through lengthy apprenticeships with master sculptures in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwean tribes and communities are traditionally collectivistic. People tend to put their group of families' interests before their own, receiving support, protection, and a sense of belonging in return. There is a great emphasis on communal gathering within tribes, where people share stories, music, songs, and dance. Indeed, Zimbabwean culture has a long tradition of storytelling and folklore that provides each generation with a sense of connection to their history and ancestors. These stories also provide communities with a unified understanding of their group's origins. Storytelling gathering may be accompanied with theatrical and musical performances. Music and dance are also central to Zimbabwean culture and traditional sounds, rhythms, and instruments are distinctive and showcase the color, creativity, spirit, and joy of the Zimbabwean people. The Mbilla, a piece of wood with metal keys, has a light, warm, acoustic sound and is used in most celebrations. The Mbilla may be used to contact spirits, govern the weather, and chase away sickness among other purposes and can be considered sacred in some communities. There are many other rituals and ceremonial practices in Zimbabwe. Some are specific to certain tribes, whilst others are more widely practiced. Many relate to celebrating milestones in people's lives, such as marriage, the installation of chiefs, or the circumcision ceremony that marks a boy's transition to manhood. Traditional ceremonies, festivals, and rituals also usually involve contacting the spirit world and making offerings. The wildlife of Zimbabwe occurs foremost in remote or rugged terrain. In national parks and private wildlife ranches in Miombo Woodlands and Thorny Acacia or Kopje, the prominent wild fauna includes African buffalo, African bush elephant, black rhinoceros, southern giraffe, African leopard, lion, plains, zebra, and several antelope species. The introduction of the Wildlife Conservation Act of 1960 resulted in checking the loss of wildlife in Zimbabwe since the 1960s. In the 1990s, it became one of the leading countries in Africa in wildlife conservation and management with a reported income generation $300 million US dollars per year from the protected areas of the state. Rural community-run wildlife management areas and private game ranches and reserves. The Parks and Wildlife Board, consisting of 12 members, is responsible for this activity and deciding on policy issues under the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resource Management. The Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority under the board has onerous task of overseeing activities related to 10 national parks, 9 recreational parks, 4 botanical gardens, 4 safari areas, and 3 sanctuaries. These areas are collectively called the Wildlife Estate, which covers an area about 47,000 km square, which is equivalent to 12.5% of the total land area of the country. However, reports of National Geographic News indicate a disturbing trend of dissemination of wildlife in Zimbabwe as a result of national economic meltdown, leading to over-exploitation of the wildlife resource to meet the finance of the nation. 
while you might ask yourself what is Zimbabwe most famous for well it's a place for travelers to unlock the natural wonders of the world including the famous Victoria Falls Zimbabwe is for those who love adventure with three geographical regions the country is filled with attractive sights and astonishing views Boosting multiple national parks, they are home to the big five lions, leopards, elephants, rhinos, and buffalo. You will have plenty of changes to catch a glimpse of some Africans' best known wildlife. A welcoming nation that has multiple world heritage sites, you can spend days or weeks exploring Zimbabwe and still only scratch the surface. The people are known for their grace and kindness which is just another reason that people fall in love with Zimbabwe. Halal is the capital of Zimbabwe and is known for its skyscrapers, line lanes and questionable character, while word in the street doesn't favor the capital. Many people are on the fence about whether it is worth a visit, but with fine dining, museums, markets and bars, Halal can provide good entertainment. While you may be tempted to go directly on safari, Halal can be rewarding in itself and it is worth spending a few days exploring the capital. As said in the introduction, there are some of the famous personalities that are going to be said in this video. Let's start with Robert Gabriel Mugabe. Born 21st February 1924 and died on 6th September 2019. Was a Zimbabwean revolutionary and politician who served as Prime Minister of Zimbabwe from 1980 to 1987 and then as President from 1987 to 2017. He served as leader of the Zimbabwe African National Union ZANU, from 1975 to 1980 and led its successor political party, the ZANU Patriotic Front, from 1980 up to 2017. Ideologically an African nationalist during the 1970s and 1980s, he identified as a Marxist, Lenin and as a socialist after the 1990s. Having dominated Zimbabwe's politics for nearly four decades, Mugabe was a controversial figure. He was praised as a revolutionary hero of the African liberation struggle who helped free Zimbabwe from British colonialism, imperialism, and white minority rule. The second one, Kanan Sodindo Banana. Born 5th March 1936 and died 10th November 2003. Was a Zimbabwean Methodist minister, theologian and politician who served as the first president of Zimbabwe from 1980 up to 1987. He was Zimbabwe's first head of state ceremonial president after the Rankster House agreement that led to the country's independence. In 1987, he stepped down as president and was succeeded by Prime Minister Robert Mugabe, who became the country's executive president. In 1997, Banana was accused of being a homosexual and after a highly publicized trio, was convicted of 11 counts of sodomy and unnatural acts, serving six months in prison. Banana was a controversial figure, especially after after his criminal conviction. As president, he did not always command respect. Nevertheless, he was held in esteem by some of his involvement in Zimbabwe's liberation struggle and later for his role in uniting Zano and Zap, which ended the Gukurahundi massacres. After his death, Mugabe called him a rare gift of the nation. The third one is Lavmo Madhoko. He is a Zimbabwean politician and democracy activist who is best known for being one of the founding members of the National Constituent Assembly or NCA, a pro-democracy group. An active civil society worker, Madhuku served as NCA's president from 2001 to 2011. During his tenure as the president, he aimed at bringing forth a new autonomous constitution in Zimbabwe that would get rid of the one-party rule of Robert Mugabe. President of Zimbabwe since 1987, the highlight of his career came when the NCA successfully defeated a constitution introduced by Mugabe in the national referendum in 2000. Ever since, Madhoku had been trying to bring to an end the autocratic rule and establish a democratic constitution in Zimbabwe. He attained his degree in law from the University of Zimbabwe and later
later did his doctorate degree from the University of Cambridge. He has been appointed as a full-time professor at the University of Zimbabwe since 2011. Madhuku penned the famous textbook An Introduction to Zimbabwean Law, which gives an insight into Zimbabwean legal system. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. You can also tell us what culture you would like for the next video. Thank <laughs> you.